I can quite honestly say this both excites me extremely and scares the life out of me. Thank you to our $5 patron, Sin is Lancelot. And a big thank you to our $25 patron, the Mr. Greed. Now, before we hop into this quick discussion about Percival's magic and how nutty it is, please don't forget to leave your own thoughts on Percival's magic in the comment section down below. Leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, make sure that little notification bell so you don't miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Also, also, I do have a Patreon down below and I'd appreciate any support you're willing to give. Now, let's get into it. What's up, guys? I got a pencil here. And yeah, let's talk about Percival's magic and how, um, how stupid it is. Aye, so the thing with Percival's magic, right? Is that when it was first revealed in the Pelgard fight, I was like, what? Mainly because it didn't necessarily, it seemed to have traits of almost everything, right? Like it formed miniature copies of him, which was like a cloning magic, which actually I don't think we, did we ever see someone with the cloning magic? I don't even think we ever saw someone with the cloning magic, but obviously it reminded me of darkness too. Be, but then again, darkness isn't really magic, it's like a biological thing that demons can do, but that's a different story for another time. But you could also manipulate it. It was weird, right? It was just these glow. It was essentially amorphous energy. And as someone in that comment section did say, it gave me a lot of Green Lantern vibes. And I, I'm excited you're concerned for it because the potential this magic has is out of this world. Because whether it grows in quantity or quality, who knows if both it's going to be arguably the most broken magic out of everything we've seen in the verse so far. Except for, like, literal magic negation, magic reversal stuff. Like, I can't see anything reasonably surpassing personal magic. Whatever its name is going to be. Because we don't even have a name for it. Because <laughs> after all this time, 50 chapters deep, no one has ever actually sat down and been like, you know, we know it's hero type. But what that mean, though? Like, <laughs> like, what's the name for it? And I guess it's just because of how nebulous it is, right? Because... If I'm trying, to, I'm going off the top of the dome here, trying to remember all the specific things that Percival's magic can do. It can absorb other magics. It can heal you. It can shape shift into mini Percivals. It can be malleable into things like weapons. It can amplify other weaponry. It can, on top of that, manage to coat other people's weaponry that's not even your own. It can not just heal yourself, but heal others. It allows you to fly. It allows you to come back from death. It's based on the powers of other people's emotions relative to yourself, even when you yourself are dead. Like, what? And I get it. Percival, he's our MC, right? He needs to be snapped. He needs to be broken, as per the laws of anime, and really storytelling in general. But the way that Nakoba has set up Percival so far, like this early on in the narrative, I just don't see where he can go. <laughs> like, actually, no, here's the thing. I can see where he can go, and it scares me, right? Because if Percival, at this level, right, 50 chapters in, 16-year-old, probably in verse, discovered his magic at best a week ago. And he's already creating copies of himself, healing entire squads, carrying whole groups of people, enhancing other people's weaponry. If he's already doing all that kind of insane stuff this soon, what happens if a time skip occurs? What happens if he gets an actual little proper bit of training? What, what, what's going to happen here? Because that means he could hypothetically make full grown copies of himself. Like he could literally just produce copies of himself with his magic and these copies can do all the things his magic can do from healing to it can track things i didn't even realize that i forgot about that it tracked the coffin of eternal darkness why i don't know i guess it had a high magic signature or something like there's there's so many weird things that it can just do and it almost like i'm not sure because nagaba he, he, he's a funny guy right like he, he's a very he's a tricky dude so i'm not sure if this is supposed to be like uh not satire but like a commentary on all the powers a protagonist could have but because it's literally like i can't think of a thing percival's magic can't do except for like wiping you from existence like that's that's the only thing i can think of that it can't do we have well so far who knows maybe it will wipe somebody out of existence one day but the fact that percival can do so much stuff with his random magic because it's quote-unquote hero type magic that can just do anything and like the thing is it, it's not flexible in the way that something like darkness i keep saying darkness because darkness is the magic type it's not flexible in the same way that something like a chastity fool is it's not some flexible in something the way that like hellblaze it like these different other magic it's not flexible like that it's literally we you have something that can do everything like percival hasn't necessarily explored his magic right like 
characters in the verse, like your kings, your Meliodas's, essentially all your sins, they've taken their base magic and through years and years of experiencing it, living with it, doing stuff with it, they've expanded the usage of it. Like Meliodas invented Trillion Dark by copying what King did. King has the base ability of disaster and created status promotion from, or like he had access to status promotion from. Like these are stretches. Like you can write down a solid definition for something like Hellblaze. It is a black flame that negates regeneration. It takes someone like Meliodas, who's experienced the power and lived with it for a long time, to be like, okay, I can use it to quote my blade, I can use it to act as a spear, I can use it, I, like, he can, he had to stretch it. I reiterate, Percival has had his magic for what is likely, at max, in verse, to have been two weeks, and he has all this utility with it already. What happens when Percival starts exploring? like when he actually sits down and is like you know my magic can do a lot i wonder what creative things i can do with it like could percival create like whole he can we've seen him create whole avatars of himself that have caught flames and spat them back out at something else like the it's it's like sandbox magic and that's exciting because I'm glad that Nakaba, like, he's sort of embracing the idea that we've had in the past. Like, notably, fans and just people in general have come around and just seen so many things. Like, darkness within Seven Daily Sins, while not being a magic, is a substance that a whole ton of people have access to that a lot of me and a lot of others have agreed is kind of underutilized. Like, the flexibility of darkness is insane. You might as well go wild with it. Same thing with something like Disaster or anything like that. Like, go wild, go nutty, go crazy, go a bit stupid with it. Like, if you really want to, go ahead. But they haven't. But I think Nakaba, like, either heard those complaints, stumbled across those ideals, and was like, you know what? If they want to explore it, I'll explore it myself. Like, that's legit what he's doing right now. And it's cool. I'm very excited to see it because it's just great development for a series that had a relatively interesting magic system that just never necessarily took it too far. It was very basic. Like, you never saw characters stacking magics on top of magics, right? Because, like, one of the biggest things that I'll always get Meliodas' case for is not, like, throwing out a magic attack and then just full countering it between a whole bunch of his clones till it gets super strong while the main body fights a real person and then he tags out and then slams the person with, like, a Hellblaze multiplied by 20 times over or something like that. Like, he never does something like that. However, which could do with that is insane. Like, the option is there. You could do different things where you combine different magics in order to create different amazing combinations. But what Nakaba has essentially decided to do with Percival is rather than give him... A general substance or a specific magic that when combined with other magics can be stacked in order to create certain things. He sort of just does things. Like, it's... He, it happens. <laughs> and, and it's fine, right? Because you don't necessarily have to explain everything. But, like, the upper limits of his magic just don't seem to be a feasible thing. Like, I can't... Like, this is darn near... This is going to sound bad. This is darn near chaos magic. Like, it, the only thing is, Percival's constructs are supposedly still that that light. Like, they aren't hard, solid... Con like, chaos magic will literally create a planet. It'll create worlds within worlds. I don't, that's what chaos magic will do. However, what chaos magic won't do is... Well, no, to be fair, chaos magic is essentially Percival's magic stepped up. Like, to the ultimate degree. Because Chaos Magic can very likely do everything Percival's magic can do, but even better. But for the fact that Percival, our MC, has a magic that 50 chapters in completely... Well, see, the thing is, I'm not sure I'm not sure if I can quantify it as unexplored if it's done so much. But, like, by explored, I mean Percival himself has gone out of his way to do things that are beyond the extreme. Like, Percival doesn't... I don't think Percival instinctively went out and told himself to heal. Like, his magic follows commands. Like, it can heal, it can punch, it can fight, it can crowd. Like, it's it's a, it's a strange thing. His magic can take on the properties of other magics. There's just a whole ton of interesting stuff that it can do. And the thing is, I'm not complaining because it's weird, right? Because I don't think I'm complaining. I don't, I'm not, and I don't want to sound like I'm complaining. I'm excited that Nakaba is going this way. <laughs> But at the same time, it's like, where do you go? <laughs> like, where do you, like, you can go nowhere but up, but what is up? Like, are we going to have <laughs> essentially Naruto all over again where Percival is jumping you with like a thousand of him and they're all composed of magic? And even if you destroy them, they have no effect on him. 
like say his magic increases quantity wise right like he just can produce more of it like we've seen him do that usually when he comes back from death or even when he first activated his magic and stuff like that like his magic will explode in like big bursts and it'll revive itself it'll essentially grow bigger if he does that then that means he has access to more sword sword length which amped by a base weapon is apparently around a 10 times multiplier Okay, he also has more flight time. He has more people he could carry. He has more people he could heal. He has more people he could drown in his magic. Like he could do so many different things. Like imagine Percival with just with the amount of skill level and the amount of abilities he has with his magic right now, going to an ocean, drinking it all up and then dropping it on somebody. I know that's super super insane, but like the thing is, Percival can essentially act as a conduit for all other magics. That's what his magic does. It's kind of like. Like, you know how you can put honey mustard on everything that's not a breakfast food? Like, that, that's what Percival's magic is. Like, you can literally just drizzle it on top of anything. It'll work just fine. It's the it's arguably the most flexible magic we've ever seen. With the most properties we've ever seen out of pretty much one magic. Like, Disaster, as much as I love the ability, I don't think it's ever been shown to heal somebody. Like, technically through a spirit spear it can, but without the spirit spear there, you can't heal somebody with the Disaster. Like, there's no magic in the Seven Daily Sins verse, as far as I can remember, that heals yourself and others, can take on the properties of other magic, can act as a good offensive magic in of itself, can act as a great defensive magic in of itself, and on top of that allows you to fly, and then on top of the flight, allow you to carry other people, and by the way, apply all those properties that are specific to yourself to other people. Like, is, 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 am I the only one who finds that nutty? A little bit crazy? A little bit stupid? <laughs> like, the sheer versatility is just out of this world, and I'm truly happy that Nakaba is taking us this far but i'm not scared <laughs> because like with percival's level of magic how is someone like lance meant to compete right because the main reason lance is so powerful right now is because he literally just has the raw years of experience and combat knowledge and actual just raw power over percival but like so far and to be fair we just got introduced to lance so he could have way more crazy magic but even if lance gets the, some of the hypothetical stuff i covered in his video I don't think it's going to be as good as Percy's magic. Percy's magic is nuts. Same with Tristan. I mean, unless Tristan gets chaos powers. If Tristan gets chaos powers, he essentially has Percy's magic put on crack. But if Tristan just gets, like, supreme dark and light control, I, I don't think that stacks up to Percy. But, like, Percy is built to be broken. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. That's the whole thesis of the video. Percy is built to be broken. And I'm... I'm not sure how, how well I feel about that. Especially the main issue I have with Percy's power is, like, the revival thing. And I get it. It ties into his whole, like, horseman of death thing. Like, he's one of the four knights of the apocalypse, the knight of death, for a reason. But it seems, it seems very... I can't say the word, but it seems very ex machina, right? Like, it's... Per, if Percy's, what I'm afraid of Nakaba doing with Percy's magic, if I had to simplify, right? Because as happy as I am that Nakaba's expanding, getting into a little more negative discussion, I'm afraid Percy's magic is going to become a cure all, an a philosopher's stone, like just an answer to every problem. And I don't want that, right? Like the reason that the Seven Deadly Sins group as a whole was interesting on on its own was the fact that there wasn't an there wasn't a philosopher still there wasn't one character that could do everything sure there were characters that had power leaps over each other sure there are characters that were just had massive gaps in strength but every character for one way or another had some sort of use that the other couldn't do meanwhile percy seems to be the character that is the Swiss Army Knife. He can do everything, and I feel like Nakaba, if he's not careful, could write Percy's character as a do-everything character, as a get-out-of-jail-free situation. I don't like that. <laughs> Personally, I don't like when narratives are written like that just because it feels like, oh, okay, it's... it's Because, <sighs> see, like, if it's built up, because right now, Percy's magic could go one-shot Arthur, and you could, be you could argue it's built up based on how crazy it's been so far, but I'm not sure how I feel about that. It's just not... It's not a explanation or a reason that I would be comfortable with. Like, I want Percy's magic to have limits. Let it stop somewhere. Let it do that. But if it can revive you from death, like, what are you, what are you supposed to do? If it is fueled by the hopes and dreams of other people, how, how do you stop that? You, you crush the, you create despair, but even the despair can't last. All it takes is a couple words and his magical comeback soaring. Like, what's, what's the point of having a healer? 
you have personal. What's the point of having an attacker? You have personal. What's the point of having a defensive guy? You have personal. What's the point of having a specialty guy? You have personal. Like, personal can do everything. And I'm not sure if that's a good thing. <laughs> like, it could be a good thing. And But I think the main thing you'd have to do is keep it so per Percy essentially can't be as strong as the rest of the Knights because his very existence invalidates them. Like, he, I mean, not necessarily invalidates, like, but that's what I'm scared of, though. Like, simply put, I'm afraid that Percival's magic will overshadow and essentially override the importance of the rest of his gang. <laughs> that's it. Regardless whether his gang be the current gang he has right now, the rest of the four knights, with how insane in the membrane Percival's magic has been established to be so far, I'm just, I'm just slightly concerned. Because Nagaba could very easily just go down the path. Like, he could essentially... The thing is, Percival's magic has been built up for way longer. But he could true magic it. He could literally say, Oh, Percy's magic has this one-off power. Because I need to have this power in this moment. Bada bing, bada boom. Problem solved. Then it never appears again. Like, that's essentially what... That's what Nagaba did with true magic. He needed an excuse for Meliodas to defeat the Demon King and become super powerful. But then he needed to nerf him right after that. And, I, I, and, if, and to be fair... I'm never a fan of that. Like, there's something that happened in another popular manga right now where a character became super strong. They just it got insanely more powerful right out of nowhere. And then the mangaka just hard undid it. And I don't like that kind of power. I don't, it's not, it's not my favorite thing. I get why you have to do it sometimes from a, narr from a narrative perspective. If you haven't built up your narrative well enough or planned it out well enough, sometimes you do need those just one-off booms. Those one-off, I need to send the character through the moon or I need this character to develop this power out of nowhere. But I don't want Percy and his magic being reduced to that. I don't want them being, I don't want Percy becoming a cure-all. So, in short, while I am excited for Percy's magic because of all the insane things it can do, I'm super excited to see where Nakaba takes it, whether it be like a magic development or a quality of magic development. So whether his healing gets faster, his clones will get bigger, the property stealing gets cooler, like all the stuff like that. Well, all that's cool. At the same time, I beg Nakaba to please be careful. Don't. Don't go too crazy. <laughs> and I know this come that sounds strange coming from me. Cause usually I love it when things go crazy and go stupid. That's my thing. I do enjoy that. But don't don't let Percy's magic break the narrative. You can have it have a whole ton of properties. You can have it have almost all the utility in the verse. You can you give it all that, but don't let it be a cure all. Don't let it take over the narrative. Essentially let you get, don't make don't don't turn it into an excuse, essentially. That's my only hope. However, that was, those are my thoughts on Percy's Magic so far. I definitely will do an explained video for it. Once we get, like, I can't even, I wouldn't even have a name for it. Like, this video is titled Percy's Magic because that's that's all the name we have for it. We don't have an official title for it. So once that gets established, once we get a little bit more of it, once we get a full understanding of all its abilities and utilities, then I'll do an explained video for it. But for right now, it's just like, ooh. ooh. Oh, that's nutty. And, and this is like just talking about his magic, not individual Percival himself. I'm definitely going to make a potential Percival video because already he seems pretty darn insane. However, that's it. Those are my thoughts on Percival's magic. Please tell me your thoughts on Percival's magic in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe in the little notification bell so you don't miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Also, do have a Patreon down below, and I'd appreciate any support you're willing to give. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is That Guy the Pencil, writing off.